Hey, 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 Conscious Crew. Welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner, where we are unpacking your trauma to heal your relationships. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. Today, we are talking toxic relationships. Simply put, a toxic relationship is one where you are in a relationship and the goods don't necessarily outweigh the bad. It's really the bad are outweighing the goods. In this episode, we are going to use my favorite show, The Game, with Derwin Davis and Melanie Barnett. In this episode, we're looking at Drew Sedora and Derwin, and they're at this award show, and they're going to finally show the kiss where they do the music video, where Derwin was a part of the music video with Drew and shares this passionate kiss. The thing is, Melanie has no idea what's going on. You guys know Derwin Davis and Melanie Barnett. Derwin is a football player. Melanie is trying to become a doctor. And long story short, Derwin cheats. Uh, I don't remember how many times. Um, I think twice. Uh, where he kisses one girl, which is Drew Sedora, for her music video. The thing is, Drew Sedora and him have a thing going on. So the kiss for the music video is a little bit more passionate. And then he cheats again when he has sex with Drew Sedora um, at the hotel. The thing is... Melanie has no idea this is going on, but she's constantly in this battle between, do I love Derwin? I love Derwin. I need to forgive him. I don't know if I should forgive him. The thing about the red flags in this relationship is one, their communication was great, but I wouldn't say it was the most effective because there were times in the season where we see them going through the motions, right? Where they would have things going on. She can't show up because she has something else to do. She didn't communicate that effectively. She would then try to make up for it. And this is because Melanie had a very enmeshed relationship with Derwin, which means that she lost her individuation. She didn't know who she was outside of Derwin. And we know that this happens because we see herself recreate herself when Derwin cheats and she cuts her hair and she's like, I'm dancing and emphasizing. Y'all don't play with me with the show because I've seen too many episodes too many times. And so I would count that as a red flag. You're in a relationship. It feels toxic. It is toxic because you have more bad situations happen that give emo- that leave you an emotional deficit than good ones. Another red flag in their relationship would be the support. In the beginning, they both supported one another, but through time, Darwin didn't really support Melanie anymore as he wanted all the support to be on him versus Melanie's career choice. We can see that this is huge when her parents start to talk to her about what's happening. Why are you not in school or what's going on with school? And then she's again retreating. She's not doing so well because she's so infused in Darwin's life. Don't get me wrong. Celebrities have huge, huge responsibilities as well. But she had to drop her life to, and again, by her choice, had to drop her life to support him. The red flag here is you can't do that if you are truly seeking to have a beneficial relationship. You have to understand who you are. You have to understand what you want to do and what you like. And in the game, Melanie struggled with doing that a little bit. Another red flag in their relationship is the trust. Melanie in the beginning really did trust Derwin, but I think after she saw how big he was getting and she and him having his um, manager, and I can't remember the young lady's name at the time, at this time, he, she was getting, she started to get jealous and jealousy is another red flag in relationships. It's okay to have petty jealous, but jealousy to the point where I'm sneaking into hotel rooms, I'm trying to look through his phone, I'm doing all these things, It doesn't make for a healthy relationship. We have to give our partner space. And Melanie struggled to do that a lot, actually. Another red flag, Melanie's inability to let go of control. She felt like she had to control every single aspect at a certain time. Maybe it was like halfway through the first season. And we know that control is really big when it comes to making relationships work. You guys have to be pretty equal and equal in the sense of, hey, I'm going to give you these responsibilities and I accept it and I'm going to have these other responsibilities that I'll take on and you accept it as well. Melanie started to exhibit these senses or signs of not having control and it didn't really work for her relationship. 
it became a red flag and it becomes a part of emotional manipulation. Oftentimes when we are seeking control all the time, it leads us into the avenue of toxicity. Some other signs of red or red flags in relationship you want to look out for is just the blame and guilt. Who's having, who's blaming who? Who's guilty of what? Though in the game, blame and guilt is one that comes and goes throughout the entire episodes. It happens. The good example of this would be Kelly's relationship. Y'all remember Kelly, right? Kelly was married to Mr. Cheap, aka Jason Pitts. So Kelly and Jason's relationship was also one that far outweighed the relationship between Derwin and Melanie. Jason had a hundred percent need for control. And we see that all throughout the seasons until they break up. Jason wanted um, Kelly to dress a certain way, to look a certain way, to eat certain things. Jason wants to control all the finances. And we know that that is unhealthy for anyone. We have to have some sort of autonomy in our relationships, friendships, familiar relationships, what have you. Otherwise, we can lead ourselves into a depression. Kelly, unfortunately, did not have much control. And it wasn't until she truly could not take it anymore where she started to gain this control because she retreated. She pulled back and said, look, mm -mm, I'm not having this. Another red flag is a sign of disrespect. When we look at Kelly and Jason's relationship and we're looking at the disrespect that they had, I, I wouldn't say for one another, it was more so Jason's towards Kelly. It was pretty disrespectful. Jason oftentimes would never call her out her name, but make these sly remarks that weren't really nice. They also had serious communication problems. And that's because Jason was completely shut off from the ideal of hearing what needed to be said. Jason, it was either his way or the highway. Kelly had very little to say. And so sometimes she would rebel. His frequent criticisms really broke the relationship. The criticisms of how she looked or him not taking accountability the one time when he was doing the the drug the steroids you know and he would blame Kelly and her body when it's really he his inability to you know perform in the bedroom because of the steroids it spoke millions <laughs> magnitudes to the toxicity between the two of them now i want y'all to understand you can have a healthy you can have a good relationship but still have toxicity. But the toxicity cannot outweigh the good. So yeah, maybe you guys don't communicate as effectively, but everything else is fine. Like you have good trust in one another. You probably have mutual respect for each other. Yeah, that's fine. You're, no one's relationship is 100% perfect. But if you have all the things on a list that make you horrible, Okay, it's probably time for you to understand that you have to get out or seek help and create some type of change in your relationship. If you want to have a relationship that is going to be healthy, compromise is huge. Compromising doesn't necessarily mean like, hey, I'm not going to get my way. It just says, hey, we have these two differing opinions or we have two outlooks on life. And this is how we're going to approach it so both of our needs can get met effectively. It doesn't necessarily hurt someone if you do need to compromise on something. It just means the two of you can communicate effectively to have that relationship work. So you're hearing about all these red flags and you're thinking like, okay, maybe I'm checking off some of these boxes. Maybe I am a threat to my, my relationship or maybe that person's threat to our relationship. How do we fix it? I always say it starts with ourself. What's making us stay in this relationship that what's making us stay in this relationship to make us think like, okay, we deserve some of this. What has happened in my childhood? What has happened in my past relationship that validates the thought that I'm not worthy of a healthy relationship? Who has normalized some of these things for us? Because we go through life oftentimes feeling a sense of normalcy with the lack of effective communication or the lack of individuate, individuation or independence. Because a lot of us think like, well, I have to be clingy. That's the only way to show 
that I love him or her, or I have to be jealous. That's the only way to show that I care. And there's always a healthy balance. We have to just find that healthy balance. Otherwise, you're running the risk of having a toxic relationship that becomes very conditioned within your body so that when you go to another relationship, it's going to be the same repeat. We don't want that. We have to recognize the signs pretty early. So these red flags are something that happens and we need to be aware of them. I've actually created a checklist for you guys that you can download below. Be sure to check it out. I have all of these things listed here because these things happen. So do yourself a favor, check out the checklist, make note of what needs to be changed in your relationship. I have a couple of reflection questions there. It's going to be helpful for you as you are moving through your current relationship or as you are going into another relationship. You want to make sure you're not bringing that baggage from the last relationship into your new relationship. Otherwise, it's not going to work and it's no fun. Today's episode was super short because Netflix won't let me be great. I had so much more to show you guys, uh, but as y'all know, Netflix does not um, allow recording, but I'm going to tell you guys there are certain episodes you should probably watch. Um, One of them is the very last episode of the first season, but I'm talking about these things with Derwin and um, Melanie. So go ahead and watch that episode if you have Netflix. Um, there's also episodes with Kelly and Jason. I think it's the fifth episode on season two. Go ahead and watch that where we can see Jason making disparaging remarks. Not to say that you want to see that, but it helps put things into perspective if you are listening to this podcast episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please let me know. Please follow me on Instagram at Sia the Therapist because on there I actually give videos very frequently on how you can heal the trauma that you're undergoing. We go through so much trauma. And again, trauma is just an exacerbated form of stress that you haven't necessarily addressed that's holding you back from the greatest potential self. Okay. We've all been through trauma, y'all. We just have to recognize it. And I'm doing that on Instagram. So please go check out my Instagram, follow. If you guys have any suggestions for shows you want me to watch, review, and give a clinical output on, leave it in the comment section below. I honestly enjoy communicating communicating with you guys (laughs) Uh, because we're like fam, y'all the conscious crew, okay? Before you go though, I had left something really special right here. Go check it out. All right, y'all. Moesha, that's my show. And unlike Netflix, I actually have clips here that I walk you through so you can have some visuals from our audio listeners. The Moesha episode is already out. You guys can go listen to it out in your car ride home or while you're in the house cleaning. I love y'all so much. I want y'all to keep walking good and keeping the vibes high. No cultural corner today because I am the culture that I brought to you today. All right. I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye.